The 2019-2022 Sri Lankan economic crisis, currently affecting the island nation of Sri Lanka, is largely attributed to economic mismanagement by its incumbent government. It has led to unprecedented levels of inflation, near depletion of foreign exchange reserves, shortages of medical supplies and price increases in basic commodities. The crisis has been said to be caused by multiple compounding factors such as tax cuts, money creation, a nationwide policy to shift to organic or biological farming as well as events such as the Easter bombings in 2019, and the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The subsequent economic hardships resulted in the public openly voicing their dissent, leading to one of the largest demonstrations in the island's history, the 2022 Sri Lankan protests. Sri Lanka had been earmarked for sovereign default, of the remaining foreign reserves of $1.9 billion as of March 2022, would not be sufficient to pay the country's foreign debt obligations for 2022, with $4 billion to be repaid. An international sovereign bond repayment of $1 billion is also due to be paid by the government, in July 2022. According to Bloomberg, Sri Lanka has a total of $8.6 billion in repayments due in 2022, including both local debt and foreign debt. In April 2022 Sri Lanka announced that it is defaulting making it the first sovereign default in Sri Lankan history, since gaining independence in 1948. According to W. A. Y. Jordina, a former deputy governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, the country was a long way into an economic crisis in 2015. The government which came into power in 2015 knew this and had been warned by the Institute of Policy Studies of Sri Lanka of a number of risks. While then Prime Minister Ronald Wickramasinghe in 2015 had presented a strong economic policy to address the situation, the coalition government could not get the policy pushed through parliament which would eventually result in further policy confusion in the coming months. The government did not adequately address the economic warnings and emerging dangers, consuming itself in other government-related activities such as constitutional reforms. Certain practices including those by the Ministry of Finance led by Ravi Karananayake were globally frowned upon. Election-related economic decisions were pushed such as excessive distribution of freebies. The Institute of Policy Studies of Sri Lanka's 2014 State of the Economy report highlighted hot money, worrying borrowing practices, temporary and superficial quick fixes, and monopoly of FDI flow into one sector. Further political turmoil in 2018 worsened the economic outlook. By that time, the government had carried out several reforms under an IMF-supported program towards fiscal monetary consolidation, and had successfully controlled inflation. These reforms included an automatic fuel pricing formula which significantly reduced fiscal risks posed by state-owned enterprises, raised the for-value added tax rate from 11% to 15% and broadened the VAT base by removing exemptions. Many of the reforms were reversed by the new government after the 2019 elections. The previous administration also drafted the 2019 Central Bank Bill to make the central bank independent from political influence by banning the Treasury Secretary and any member of the government from becoming members of the Monetary Board. Money printing was also to be banned as the bill states the central bank shall not purchase securities issued by the government, by any government-owned entity, or any other public entity in the primary market. Then Central Bank Governor, Dr. Indrayit Kumaraswamy noted balance of payments issues increased inflation and asset bubbles as reasons for the ban. The Sri Lanka Pajajana Party, led by the Rajapaksas, opposed an independent central bank, and discarded the bill as soon as they came to power. Many experts compared Lebanon's economic situation with that of Sri Lanka, and had warned that Sri Lanka too was on the way to defaulting on its sovereign bonds. Both nations had similar issues, including deep economic crises occurring after their successive governments piled up unsustainable debts following the end of civil wars. In January 2022, India pledged a total of $2.415 billion US dollars to overcome dire financial constraints, caused by external debt payments and a lack of US dollars in Sri Lanka for business. Under SARC currency swap arrangement, India extended a $400 million and also deferred an Asian Clearing Union settlement of around $500 million. India granted a new line of credit worth $500 million for the purchase of petroleum products. On March 17, 2022, Sri Lanka received a US$1 billion credit line as a lifeline from India in order to buy urgently needed essential items, such as food and medicine. The credit line was activated after India and Sri Lanka formally entered into a credit agreement during Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa's visit to New Delhi. 
on April 2, 2022, it was reported that Indian traders have started loading 40,000 tons of rice for prompt shipment to Sri Lanka. By April 6 India had sent 270,000 metric tons of fuel to Sri Lanka. Some of the shipments were met with bureaucratic hurdles. Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu M. K. Stalin had proposed strategies to provide essential commodities such as rice, cereals and life-saving drugs to the Tamil people in Sri Lanka who live in the north, east and central provinces of the country. However Tamil political parties in Sri Lanka rejected aid exclusively to Tamils and requested that aid be distributed to all ethnic and religious groups in Sri Lanka. The government of Singapore announced that it would provide seed money amounting to 100,000 US dollars as a relief package to support the Singapore Red Cross's humanitarian public fundraising efforts for the most vulnerable communities in Sri Lanka.